More and more companies start to offer antibody testing. Many of us are wondering whether or not we should be getting the test. And again, considering what the accuracy of these tests might be. Last week, the CDC releasing new guidelines cautioning the country on the fallacies of antibody testing. So we've been talking about this with our nine health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley. And Pyle, is, it, is this just math? Is this a simple thing to determine the factors that go into determining how accurate a test result actually is? So, Tom, there are a couple of things to think about when you're thinking about the accuracy of a test result. The first is the characteristics of the test. This is quite intuitive. So how well does the test perform? How good is it at diagnosing the true positives and the true negatives? That's obvious to us. The second one, which is not so obvious to everybody, requires a little more thinking, is that the accuracy of the test actually also depends on the prevalence of the disease in the population. So not just how who you test, but also when you test them. And let me give you an example. If I did a flu test on you in July and it came out positive, the likelihood that it would be a false positive would actually be higher than the likelihood that it's a true positive because the prevalence of flu in July is very low. But if I took the exact same test and did it on you in January and it came out positive, then the positive predictive value or the likelihood that a positive test actually tells you that it's a true positive is significantly higher. So these are the factors we have to keep in mind when we think about antibody testing, because if we start to do antibody testing in a population that has very low prevalence, we're much more likely to get the wrong result than we are to get the correct one. That sounds hard to put a lot of faith in. So what do you tell someone who has no history of symptoms, no known COVID exposure, they get tested and it comes back positive. This is a tough one. So a lot of people are getting out there and getting their testing done because they want to know, do I have it? And if they come out positive, I would say the state is in fact not even counting those people who have not had symptoms or not had a documented exposure. So what the CDC is recommending for these people is a strategy called orthogonal testing, which basically means you get a second test to confirm that this is not actually a false positive, but it is a true positive. So for those people that don't remember having symptoms or exposure or anything like that, two tests are better than one. And if your test comes back positive, I would say it's probably worth the $100 to repeat it, make sure it really is a true positive. So as far as antibody testing, who should be tested right now? When, when should they be doing this? That's a great question, and, and it's really a moving target at this point. But really what we're trying to do is to really choose those populations that have a high prevalence of disease. Because remember, the accuracy of the test depends on the prevalence in the population. So these are the frontline responders, you know, healthcare workers, people who've been out there not able to stay at home. These are people who may have had symptoms, even if it was months ago and they had symptoms, and people who may have had an exposure. So if you don't have any of those three criteria, you probably shouldn't run out there and get an antibody test. If you had have symptoms, however, wait at least 10 to 14 days before you go get the test, because that's about how long it takes the antibody to start building up in your system. And at this point, there's no back end. So even if your symptoms were months ago, it's probably not a bad idea to go get that antibody test because scientists think that that antibody is still likely to be elevated. All right. A lot to consider. Always uh, good information, though. Thanks, Dr. Pyle Coley.